Hello, my name is Paul Tranny, and I'm really excited to introduce you to Adobe Illustrator. There's so much you can do with it, everything from creating graphics to illustrations to logos like you see here. I want to go ahead and get started by creating this shape right here, but this is ultimately the logo I want to build starting with this shape. So I'll close down that file and follow along as we go to File New create our very first Adobe Illustrator file. Let's give it a name, call it logo. The size will be letter and it will have a horizontal orientation. Okay, and what's nice about Illustrator is that it's vector based. So the size really doesn't matter because you can scale items up and down very easily since they're vector based. All right, from there just click okay. And then you'll notice we have our document right here and off to the side we should have a toolbar and again it's broken up into sections. So you have your selection tools at the top, you have your creation tools right in here, you have your manipulation tools and then some of your advanced tools down here. Well, I want to create that sort of sticker badge if you will, so I'll start out with the rectangle tool with it selected. Notice how I get a fill and a stroke and that's the fill and stroke that it will have once I draw the item out and also up here we have this option bar okay so uh, if I happen to draw a rectangle I can manipulate it up here in your options bar whether it's changing the color maybe even changing it to a gradient something like that you can see it changes that that gradient in there and that, that basically the fill I can change the the stroke color and even the stroke width of the stroke as I change that up and down. Let's keep it about four point would be good. All right, so I've manipulated the colors of this item that I've just drawn, and I can also manipulate the size and position. So I'm going to use the selection tool to do that. So with your selection tool selected, you'll get these different points that you can then manipulate. Maybe it's height, maybe it's position maybe scale it from the corner, scaling it down kind of like that, and again I can always position it into the center like that. Alright, so that's our first shape, and like you saw earlier, uh, I want to create a shape that has kind of these points on the sides, on every side actually, and you can do that using the pen tool, maybe the pencil tool, but actually what's hidden behind some of these tools, the ones that have uh, an arrow in the lower right corner, if you click and hold, it will expand out a menu full of additional items. So if you want to draw, draw a circle, everything clear down to a star, well that's what I want to create here is a star, somewhat of a star, so if I just click and drag, it gives me that five-pointed star. Okay, but the one I want actually has something more like eight points, so I'll click delete, and with my star tool still selected, I can click once, and now I can manipulate the number of points. So I can increase that up to about eight points if I want, and the radius, the closer these two numbers are together, the more shallow the angles are. And I'll show you exactly what this looks like. Well, that says 87. Let's do like 63. Select OK. And now you can see that shape that I get. So that looks pretty good. Again, I can position it into place using the selection tool, scaling it down, holding the shift key, dropping it in right there, something kind of like that. Again, just getting that shape that you want. And that looks pretty good. I can take the same shape and just like with other programs I can copy and then paste it to make the other side just like that. Alright, I'm going to use the star tool again, click once, and now I'm going to make a sort of a star with about uh, 12 points. Alright, that looks pretty good and this one is going to go right here in the center. Alright, uh, in fact let's increase the size of this a little bit as well. So that looks pretty good. I, I like that. I like how that is, but really I have four different shapes and I want to take all these various paths and again I'll use the zoom tool to do this. I'll zoom in here and I want to take these all these different paths and join them together. Make it one solid shape. Alright? And in order to do that I can go to Window, down to, right down here, Pathfinder. And this is great because this allows me to, you can see, unite all these shapes together. 
I can subtract the front from the back. You can do intersect and exclude. Can, there's a lot you can do in here. In this case, I want to unite all those shapes, selecting that, and now I've united all of those shapes. All right, that looks that looks pretty good. I'm starting to notice maybe some some issues, as you can see right over here. And you might get this. You might come in here and expect to use your selection tool when actually you can use your direct selection tool to then sort of select this line and select these different points and move them into position. Create more of a point if you want to. There's a number of things you can do right in here. And uh, if I zoom out a little bit, just Command minus, I can see what that looks like, or Control minus if you're on a PC. But from there, I can select any one of these points and manipulate it. So I'll zoom out a little more and just kind of create a point that I like. Something kind of like that works. Again, I'll do that over here, the bottom, sort of making that point come out kind of like that. I'll scroll to the other side, doing the same thing, maybe pointing that out just like that. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, but it's nice that you have that sort of control. Hitting the space bar, you'll be able to pan around your document, which is nice. And then again, Command minus or plus, you can zoom in and out. And Control minus or plus if you're on a PC. So again, rolling over using the direct selection tool, I can start to manipulate these different points and really get something nice. This is what I want to go with. I'd say that looks pretty good. Maybe a couple more manipulation of these various points to get what I want, but it's nice that I have this full control when it comes to Illustrator. Lastly, all I need to do is go to File and save this document. I can save it to the desktop as a Logo AI Illustrator file, clicking Save, saving it as the latest version. Click OK and congratulate yourself on creating your first shape in Illustrator.